Will you please read the call to worship with me? Read what is in the bold faced type. Rising one, come to me this day. Transform dark to light. Returning one, come to me this day. Hear and soften the sound of my cry. Rising one, come to me this day. Wake me and move me to dance. Returning one, come to me this day. Sing and lead me songs of peace. Rising one, come to me this day. Appear over and over again. Returning one, turn toward us as we turn toward you during this season of Easter. Now let us stand to sing hymn number 315. Let us bow in prayer. God of resurrection power, break the locked doors of our certainty to encourage our wonderings and our questions. Break through the walls of our fears of others that we make room for all of your table. Break through the doubt and confusion that we might come to know your presence more fully in our 
lives and in our world. When we seek to judge others, ourselves and others for disbelief and question, open the locked doors of one's heart and give us the presence of risen Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. As Christ broke the, the disciples, under the disciples' locked room, offering forgiveness and breath of new life, so Christ can come enter our closed hearts and minds and give us new life. Know that you are forgiven. Feed the breath of resurrection, creating you anew. Thanks be to God. Amen. praise to Christ's name. We're glad that you're here with us today. If you're visiting, we're especially glad that you're here. As the ushers come forward to uh, distribute the attendance pads, we do appreciate your filling those out. And take an opportunity as you sign it to introduce yourself to your neighbor if you don't know them. But let's introduce ourselves to our friends and family now. Let's uh, greet each other in the name of Christ. We come now to a time of prayer in our worship service. After our, our call to prayer, we'll share in a congregational prayer, then the Lord's Prayer. Will you bow with me, please? God of grace and God of glory, God who is constant and yet ever changing, we come before you today as a people 
calling for your presence in our midst. With change all around about us, we are anxious, not sure of what the future will bring. Yet you, O oh God, teach us through the Bible stories that change includes opportunity. And yet again and again, we resist change for the fear of losing control. May we, as your community, O oh God, evaluate change wisely. And when we perceive your presence in it, help us to welcome the new, embrace the different, and move forward in the great expectation that all things work together for the good of those who love God. And when we suspect that specific change is not for the good, but occurring nonetheless, help us to bring about your healing word and hope for the situation. Bless the change that we face because it is all around us. And may we be a people working with this new way. For fulfillment comes when we follow your path, when we listen to your voice, and you would always have us to grow. We pray for those who are in the midst of change that is hard, for those in life transition, for those who are facing the transition of illness and depression and hurt and pain. We pray for your very presence, that you would change it by your presence, O oh God, to a time of healing. O oh Lord God, we pray for those this day that are in the service of our country, for those who serve us locally, our policemen and firemen. We pray for those who minister in your name as missionaries in foreign lands, and for those who serve your word as missionaries even on our own land. Most of all, God, we're grateful that you walk along the journey with us. There are many twists and turns and many opportunities for change, but one thing never changes. You are always with your people, and we are grateful for that, even as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture for today comes from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 5, verses 27 through 42, actually. Hear now the word of the Lord. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you are, having filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at the right hand as the leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to them, Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Thetis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was killed, and all who, following, who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up at a time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. Because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him, and when they had called the apostles, they had them flogged. They, then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow with me? Eternal God, our rock and our redeemer, help us to hear your words. Help them to integrate into our lives and for us to serve. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a story about a couple of pioneer settlers named Zeb and Martha. They staked a claim and there were no close by neighbors. They built a house. They built a barn. They built a corral for their animals. And so they came to their existence. In front of the house there was a big tree and on the tree there was, Zeb put a bell. And he said to Martha, so now Martha there are outlaws around. And if anything comes up I want you to ring the bell and when I hear the bell I'll come running. A couple of days later Zeb rode out and he was cutting wood and he heard the bell and he thought there must be something wrong. So he went lickety split back to the house and there was Martha and she said would you like a fresh cup of coffee? And he said now listen again carefully the bell is for emergencies only. Half the day is gone and I'll have a hard time finishing what I want to do by tonight. Once more he rode out to the field and as he picked up the axe to begin chopping again he heard the bell and again he ran to the house and he got there and Martha says the wash tub has a leak in it. He said that's not an emergency. I can fix that later. Now I've got work to do. So again he went back and for a couple of hours he worked until he heard the bell once again. And again he went rushing, charging home to find the cabin in flames the barn already burned down and the animals roaming around. He then noticed Martha who had obviously pulled the bell, sort of heaped by the bell and he said to her, now Martha, that's more like it. <laughs> so it is with our scripture for this morning. Peter and the apostles are challenged by the status quo. They're commanded not to mention the name of Jesus. They're commanded to obey. They're commanded not to tell what they have witnessed. 
still in the midst of this opposition, when God speaks, it's time to ring the bell. Initially, it might be helpful for us this morning to remember how we got to this point in the book of Acts. Now, remember with me, we were here last week for Easter. In the story, many weeks have passed. It's beyond Pentecost. Remember with me, chapter 2, that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and it allowed that the, peop that the disciples would go how Luke describes in his sort of travelogue in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to all the world. And there, that's what they exactly did. But remember still, even at this point, that the disciples are still practicing Jews. They go to the temple to worship. And when they go, they tell of Jesus. In fact, they healed a lame man. So Peter and John are arrested for preaching in Jesus' name. And they're beaten and told to speak no more. The high priest forbids it. And indeed, Luke explains it that it's because of fear of this new group. But in today's scripture, Peter and John are at the temple to preach in the name of Jesus again. And, and Peter's response has been called by some scholars the gospel in miniature. It means, mentions Jesus' death. It mention, mentions the recognition that the, for the forgiveness of sins. And it contrasts what is from God to what is from humans. Now remember to whom the book of Luke of Acts is written and remember by whom it is written. Supposedly written by Luke, a, a, a disciple of the Apostle Paul, to Theophilus, lover of God, obviously a Gentile. And so, for instance, Pontius Pilate is not blamed for the death of Jesus, but the Jewish authorities. It is, in effect, an apology. And by that, we don't mean to say that we're sorry, but we mean an explanation. Jesus fulfilled the messianic expectations, Luke says, time after time and after time. And Luke points to Jesus in this speech as the very reason that the disciples gather. And behind that, the reason that the disciples go out. The very reason that God's plan has been fulfilled and the word has to be shared, the name of Jesus must be mentioned. And when you mention the name of Jesus, you need to ring the bell. Christian communication needs to be clear. It's not like a story about a divorce case many years ago that had a frustrated judge. The judge asked a woman, why do you want to get a divorce? On what grounds? And she said, all over. We own an acre and a half. And then the judge, no, no, do you have a grudge? And she said, yes, it fits two cars. And again, I need a reason for the divorce, the judge said impatiently. Does he beat you up? And the woman responded, oh no, I'm up by six every day to do my exercises. He gets up later. Please, said the exasperated judge, what is the reason you want a divorce? Oh, she replied, we can't seem to communicate with each other. Like Peter, we must say that we obey God rather than human authority. Preaching must always be in the name of Jesus. It doesn't come from what I believe or what the preacher believes. But it comes from the revealed Word of God. If you preach from something else, you're giving a speech. You're not preaching. And you know, strangely enough, words from the Bible don't necessarily come in alliterative fashion with the different letters from the alphabet. But rather, eternal truths from God are exactly that. We must preach in the name of Jesus. There's lots of other things that people can talk about. But when we gather, we do, we preach, we teach in the name of Jesus. What is the oldest confession of faith that the church has? What's the oldest creed? Anybody, any church that says they don't have a creed doesn't understand because a creed is to confess the faith. The oldest creed. And a creed that every Christian must say is that Jesus Christ is Lord. Without that, you may be many things, but you're not the church of Jesus Christ. So we must be clear with our communication.
when we are doing whatever we are doing, is it about the name of Jesus? You can do many worthy things and we have many community groups that do those. But what we do must be in the name of Jesus. And it must make a difference because that's what Jesus asked us to do. When we say the name Jesus, we ring the bell. Now, in the story again, once Peter has made his speech, the authorities are angry. But there is one wise man, Gamaliel who was the teacher of Saul of Tarsus, later we know as Paul. He was a moderate in the interpretation of the law. Now, Paul exploited this sort of interpretation of the law later in the book of Acts. But Gamaliel advises caution. There have been many false messiahs before. He gives two examples. However, if God is behind this, we better not oppose it. In essence, that may be nothing, but if it is... It's time to ring the bell. It takes courage to wait. It's not in our nature to be patient or to put things aside. The Olympics are always good for stories. Bud Greenspan is a name you might recognize who's filmed a lot of Olympics and is an Olympic historian. He was asked by Lawrence Lind Lindema what was one of his favorite stories about the Olympics. And he said that it goes back to 1924 with a guy by the name of Bill Havens who was the best rower in the United States and was about to go to the 1924 Paris Olympics and he was an odds-on favor to win the gold medal. But just before the Olympic team was ready to leave, Bill Havens' wife was about to give birth. Should he go? The doctor said, sure, she'd be fine, he could go, but he chose to turn his back on his own personal dream and stay with his wife as she delivered a new life into the world. Let's go forward to 1952, 28 years later. And at the time, in 24, Bill wasn't sure he made the right decision. But in 1952, he received a telegram from Helsinki, Finland that said this, Dear Dad, thanks for waiting around for me to get born. I'm coming home with the gold medal you should have won, your loving son Frank. His son won the gold medal in the singles 10,000 meter canoe event, the same event the father would have participated in 28 years earlier. Bill Havens made a great investment and waited. You see, the Christian gospel is that investment. And we don't get returns sometimes as visibly or as quickly as we want. But God's word is eternal. God's word will not be mocked. And the name of Jesus will lead the people where we need to go. As we prepare to go to the table of the Lord. We look at Peter's faith and ours. Peter, yes, he denied Jesus three times. Often Peter didn't get it. When Jesus bade him come forward on the water, he came a little ways, he looked down and started to sink. But Peter here sees that faith is a way of life. That the name of Jesus is a way of life. That with the name of Jesus there is a sense of victory. With the name of Jesus there is passion. Because of this, in the name of Jesus we can have confidence. Now, confidence and arrogance are not the same thing, and too often confused. One of my favorite stories about arrogance has to deal with the baseball player Ty Cobb. In, an, or in line with baseball season starting, Ty Cobb was a lifetime 367 hitter, and not a particularly nice person. Anyway, when he was 70 years old, he was asked by a reporter, he said, what would you hit if you were playing these days? Cobb reflected for a moment. He said, um, about 290 or perhaps 300. And the report says, is that because of all the travel, the night games, and all the new pitches? And Cobb said, no, it's because I'm 70 years old. Confidence, but not arrogance in the name of Jesus. We go out to do things. We live in a changing world. And there are lots of things that will change. But one of the things that must not change is that we must wear the name of Jesus. In ministries we have, 
in the things that we do and the way that we represent ourselves. When, and this is reflected in the Lord's Supper because we do it in Jesus' name. Because Jesus died for us. His body and blood, the grape juice and the bread represent not just forgiveness but empowerment to go out in his name. And so when we proclaim the name of Jesus, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, it's time to ring the bell. It's time to tell. It's time to proclaim the name of Jesus. Will you bow with me? Eternal God, help us to proclaim that most special of any name, that of Jesus. Amen. Our service is on page 17 in your United Methodist hymnal. But here first, the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live with one another. And then we begin with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice when union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. <coughs> I would remind you that as United Methodist, our table is open to all. You do not have to be a member of this church or a member of any church. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, believed that communion was evangelistic, that it could literally change your life. So you are invited. I'd like to ask those who are going to come to help first that we would serve, then we'll serve the choir, and then if you will come as directed by our ushers, please come to the table of the Lord. Shepherd, the body and blood of Christ given for you. Judy, the body and blood of Christ given for you. Sandy, the body and blood of Christ given for you.
Please come.
our closing communion prayer is printed in your bulletin. Will you pray this prayer with me, please? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue our worshiping of God now as we give of our tithes and our offerings. <clears throat> Will you bow once again with me, please? O oh God, for the great gift of your Son, we give you thanks. And now we ask that as we give back to you, it may be in the name of Jesus that lives would be changed, that souls would be saved. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.
our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 702, Sing with all the saints in glory. If God has touched your heart and you'd like to respond by a time of prayer or by talking to me about uniting with the church, either after the service or sometime this week, that would be an appropriate response. And again, the hymn is number 702. Go now with God's grace. Go now with God's peace. Go now in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.